All right, I got like six emails or blog comments left in a 48-hour period. And I said, we just got to address this on the podcast because this is confusing a lot of people. So I got this email. Let's just take the, the email here. George says, I heard on a Wall Street Journal podcast that the Secure Act 2.0 plans to change high-income earners' 401k catch-up contributions to Rothify them. I read your blog post on the Secure Act 2.0 changes, but what does it mean if you're already doing the backdoor Roth IRA and you're concerned about the pro rata rule about holding multiple Roth accounts? What's the priority? How would you go about setting up such a Roth account with your bank, Vanguard, or whoever? What about the solo 401k? I read somewhere that this is exempt from this rule, but information is scant. I'm concerned for 2024. Some of the details are unknown, of course, until the government uh, implements the tax code changes. This, I expect, will affect many of your subscribers. I'm waiting for your detailed blog post on this matter, many of which have saved me so much time and headaches. All right. Uh, there's a lot of uh, confused stuff in that question. And uh, and a lot of them had similar uh, amounts of confusion when I get this question. Uh, the underlying principle, though, that you need to understand is that your 401k contributions are completely separate from your IRA contributions. Completely separate. They do not overlap in any way, shape, or form, whether they are tax-deferred, whether they are tax-free, whether they are traditional, whether they are uh, Roth, whether they are after-tax, whether whatever they are. Separate limits for 401ks and separate limits for IRAs. 457s also have their own separate limits, okay? I have a few kind of pillar blog posts out there that if you listen to this podcast, even if you don't like reading blog posts, you ought to go read these blog posts, okay? Here are a few of them. One of them is our backdoor Roth IRA tutorial post, okay? It has every piece of information I could think of putting into a blog post on the backdoor Roth IRA process. And below it is like 3,000 questions from white coat investors, mostly just wanting confirmation that their understanding of the post is correct. Um, but for anything having to do with the backdoor Roth IRA, you ought to check that out. We have another blog post on multiple uh, 401k rules. The rules when you have more than one 401k uh, available to you, and you ought to take a look at that as well if you've never seen it. Uh, another important blog post I published around the beginning of 2023 is all about the Secure Act 2.0, which kind of snuck up on me a little bit. I didn't realize quite how much was in that that would change what we do here at the White Coat Investor. It had all kinds of changes. So I wrote a blog post and I think I did it on like Christmas Eve or something. I mean, I did this for you so you would understand it. But of course, people are off doing other stuff around the end of the year holidays. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people miss that post, but it's called What You Should Know About the Secure Act 2.0. And you really do need to go look at that post. It talks about this subject that this emailer is discussing, which is that um, starting in 2024, that catch-up contribution, right, which I think the catch-up is $7,500 this year, uh, if you're 50 plus in your 401k as part of the employee contribution, okay, that starting Next year for high earners, like most of you listening to this podcast, has to be Roth. And so the, the, all the 401ks in the land are still trying to figure out how to deal with that because that's a totally new change. It used to be that all um, catch-up contributions for 401ks, 403bs, et cetera, were uh, tax deferred. Well, now it's going to be optional for those under, I think it's around $140,000, $145,000 in uh, modified adjusted gross income. Um, but certainly most of you uh, at least those who are done with their training have got uh, an income above that. And so below that, you're going to have the option Roth or tax deferred. Above that, it's got to be Roth. And why they did that, I don't know. They want your tax money now, maybe. For whatever reason, it's fine. It's a good thing. It's not like this is bad that you got to have Roth, right? It's just, it's another good thing. But uh, anyway, be aware that that change is coming. Okay, so the questioner, this emailer, asked about, well, what does this mean? What does this mean for uh, my backdoor Roth IRA? Well, it doesn't mean anything for your backdoor Roth IRA. It has nothing to do with it. It's a totally separate contribution limit. Uh, your pro rata rule has nothing to do with what's in your 401k or your 403b. The only things that count toward the pro rata rule have IRA in them. SEP IRA, simple IRA, traditional IRA, rollover IRA, those ones count. Inherited IRAs don't count. Roth IRAs don't count. 
Everything else goes into the pro rata rule for the backdoor Roth IRA process. So this is no big deal. Now, how do you set this up? Well, you don't set this up. Your employer sets this up, right? It's their problem, right? Their 401k's problem specifically has to figure out how it's going to do Roth contributions into the 401k. Um, You don't have to go to the bank. You don't have to go to Vanguard. You don't have to do anything else to set this up. Now, if you are self-employed, that may not be the case. You've got to pay a little more attention to it since you're in charge of your 401k and you've got to make sure you're complying with the rules and the, the contributions that go in there, these catch-up contributions, you know, are uh, Roth. Okay, so there's other changes in the Secure Act 2.0 you should be aware of, um, and I can't go through. It's like 80 of them. I mean, there's a whole bunch of changes, and so go through that act, go through that post on the Secure Act 2.0. Make sure you understand those changes. Okay, hope that's helpful. The hosts of The White Coat Investor are not licensed accountants, attorneys, or financial advisors. This podcast is for your entertainment and information only. It should not be considered professional or personalized financial advice. You should consult the appropriate professional for specific advice relating to your situation.